Good morning, folks. We're over here at spaceweathernews.com, and we're going to be doing another one of these lifestyle news shows so you can get a little bit better idea of everything that goes into these shows and how it's all put together. So we're starting at spaceweathernews.com, and we're coming down, checking out the last 24, 48 hours on our star. You can see over here on the left in 193 Anxium that the sun is going to get a little bit jittery. It's actually the satellite that gets a little bit jittery. Uh, but no worries, GOES-13 SXI uh, from NOAA. Uh, was up the entire time. Now at the end of this frame where you can see nothing happened, uh, top left, the bright part, that's umbral magnetic fields over sunspots, so let's check them out. As you can see, these sunspots are still not developing at all. Uh, still small, still magnetically separated, uh, no real chance for magnetic mixing whatsoever, and that is the reason why solar flaring has dipped down into a class range, uh, pretty much as, as low as we're going to get. Taking a look at the solar wind now, that's Discover over on the left side, the sort of mountain in purple that was uh, the intensification uh, of the solar wind uh, speed. It never ended up producing a geomagnetic storm as it never even hit uh, much higher than 500 kilometers per second. And it is coming back down now, which is the reason why uh, you can see over here in the KP index, we are nice and calm and quiet. We're going to quickly come over to windytv.com. Now we are just going to stick here and trust that you can go and apply what we're about to see to the rest of the world. So we've got the pressure overlay on, which is this, this icon over there on the left. And we can see that the lows are pretty much right over top. Uh, this is when they're going to be getting battered. And so I'm going to turn on rain and snow, which is the little button over there on the right, the water droplet. And then down at the bottom, we're going to use the timeline to come through and see where this is expected to track. Now this is the European model, that's the ECMWF. If you want the NASA model, that's the GFS. Uh, it's usually slightly different, uh, but not really by much. So you can just use these few simple tools here, go check your own weather and anticipate what's going to be happening. We're quickly taking a look at the last couple of days of earthquakes. Um, this earthquake is listed at 5.8 by the USGS. It happened uh, late, uh, late in the day, about a day and a half ago. And even though it is at 5.8 and therefore will not count in our magnitude 6 model run, uh, it in fact was listed at 6.0 by the Philippines. Uh, one person was injured and more than 500 homes were damaged. Uh, not the kind of thing that they get every single day there in the Philippines. Uh, we're over at quakewatch.net slash prediction center and you can see that that still is the primary area on watch in terms of blot echoes. There is indeed a low pressure system that looks like it's going to be forming and running right at the uh, red region over the Philippines. If that does happen they may get an alert star. Uh, looking over towards South America here, uh, the atmospheric signals have been a little bit more difficult to peg down. Uh, then again, the country, uh, the countries along the coastline have been a little quieter than they had been the previous three or four months anyway. So uh, we're not seeing as many atmospheric signals over South America. There are just intermittent blood echoes, but they have yet to really produce anything. Let's go take a look at our top stories. Uh, this is a really interesting one from the NRAO. They're talking about Didi, uh, which is a distant dim member of our solar system. You might remember we were uh, talking about this one not too long ago in the news. Uh, this is the actual image they've caught. Uh, kind of looks like a faint smudge. Not sure how they actually knew that was Didi. Uh, this is a nice little chart comparing the sizes. Earth's moon, Pluto, and then tiny little Didi there. They do say that even though it is only 635 kilometers across, that is the size requisite to uh, have the effects that turn it into the sphere, and therefore it should be a dwarf planet. Uh, here you can see just how far out this thing orbits. Uh, technically, it comes in as uh, almost as close as, as Pluto and Neptune, but uh, then swings way, way far, uh, way further out. Interesting little Starwater uh, article we have here from NASA. This will also be linked for you below. It's talking about uh, an Earth-sized Tatooine, and what they really mean by that is Earth-sized circumbinary planet and they're saying that there's a very good chance that those are going to be habitable which is actually something Adrian D'Amico talked about at observing the frontier over the weekend we're gonna to get to that in just a moment we've been waiting to see the hail the size of baseballs the size of tornadoes we are on 
uh, the Weather Channel's website, weather.com right now, this photo, uh, courtesy of Marty Bustamante. Uh, apparently, we had uh, what would be life-threatening hail uh, if that actually hit somebody in the head. So it is now beginning in the United States. We had seen this happen in the Middle East, uh, in parts of Asia, parts of Africa as well. We've been waiting for this to come to the U.S. and uh here it is, apparently. But speaking of observing the frontier, the first presentation was uploaded yesterday. It was my own. Uh, it is called Observing the Frontier 2017. My name, Ben Davidson, with the conference opening. There will be a link to that right below this video in the description box, so just scroll down and check it out. Also, though, Brian Lucchesi, the wellness hero, the man I call the happiest man alive. Uh, he was there once again at Observing the Frontier. He had his camera out and he was doing his thing as well. I highly recommend you go over and uh, pop a quick little subscription over to Wellness Hero. He's going to be releasing a lot of, uh, technically you have to call it B-roll from Observing the Frontier, but I think it's going to be a, a lot of fun to watch as well. Uh, so that's what we have going on right now. Uh, hopefully you guys can uh, take a look at your weather, and hopefully uh, hopefully there won't be anything to watch on the sun, and hopefully earthquakes will be staying away as well. Uh, check out those videos about observing the frontier. All your links are listed below the video. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone. Oh, yeah. Just say something. Hi. Welcome. <laughs> Once you pick up. That's right.